you know, reading your book, it, it's fascinating, but it's quite easy to start thinking of the brain as this sort of abstract thing that's outside of oneself, yes. <laughs> because we've all got one, most of us. I have. hope so. And, and um, <laughs> on a good day, and uh, you know, we we can we can learn so much about ourselves from the sort of research that you talk about and the ideas that you that you offer. Um, I, I was particularly struck by um, how we learn about the brain through it not working properly. You know, for, for, for example, yes. right hemispheric yes. deficit. Yes. Um, and and um, I, I worked in a psychiatric unit mm. um, in, in the late 80s. And I, I re remember some of the patients there. Uh, mm. And I remember one particular patient, she would um, put sort of bright lipstick on and she'd really sort of um, have garish makeup. And then she would walk the corridor, stalk the corridors, shouting, screaming to anyone who'd listen, which was everybody, because you couldn't help listening. Um, but it wasn't her face, you know, this isn't my face, it's not my face, you know, mm. where's my mm. face gone? Mm. And, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so that was one. And there was another woman who um, w w was convinced that there were snakes running up and down mm. her arms. And mm. she'd, she'd, on occasion, she'd smash windows and try and uh, yeah. scrape yeah. her, her um, mm. wrists on, on the jagged glass to kill the snakes, not to kill mm. herself. Mm. Um, and then there was another man who, who um, I realize it sounds like one flew over the cook's nest, you know, sort of classic <laughs> um, psychiatric patients. But another man who thought he was a bird mm. and he mm. would rip it, you know, run around naked because yeah, birds yeah. don't wear clothes. Yes. And, and at the time, I, did, I didn't know how to make sense, mm. sense of mm. that. But um, so certainly this, this issue with identity and uh, mm. disembodiment mm. seems to be um, a symptom, yes. a characteristic of uh, hyper functioning in the left hemisphere or, or yes. not enough functioning in the right. An imbalance in any imbalance. case between the two. Yeah. Uh, that's absolutely right. Um, and there is an enormously rich literature extending back over a hundred years mm. of very carefully observed deficits in patients that can be linked to a post-mortem in those days, uh, a finding in the brain of a deficit. Uh, in structural deficit. And um, that literature is, unfortunately, a lot of it's in German and French. A lot of it has never been translated. And it's so important. And a lot of what I did in writing The Master's Emissary was to read this deficit literature. I was already very interested in it because of patients of my own, like you were saying. I've seen so many fascinating cases where a localised lesion caused a quite particular problem. And this is how we learn, and certainly have learned, about brain function mm. very effectively. And it's complementary to brain scanning. Uh, some people think that brain scanning, because it can um, focus down on a, on a tiny area, mm. um, is going to be more revealing. But there are a number of reasons why it can't do some things that brain deficit literature can do in just the same way that brain deficit literature can't do some of the things that scanning can do. So I think it's very important to look at both and yeah. put the picture together from them. But there's something very nice about seeing a person go, as it were, overnight mm -hmm. from being, as we would say, normal to believing or acting in some very strange yeah. way uh, and knowing what it is that is causing this problem. That's right. And, I, and I've always um, felt that any, any sort of pathology like that mm. sort of runs on a spectrum. So mm. I mean, we, mm. you know, if, if you spend all day at a laptop, mm. you can become sort of disconnected from your <laughs> yes. bodies you you can, know, yes. to, to a certain degree. Mm. Uh, and, um, you know, people can have issues with their identity mm. as well. Mm. And, mm. and they're not full-blown schizophrenic no, no. <clears throat> or even autistic. No. But they have these elements within them. So we can yes. learn about ourselves by looking at pathology. Path it's been often observed that pathology is one of the best ways of understanding the normal function. Yeah. And you're quite right that most things like in, uh, inhabit part of a spectrum. Mm. Uh, there's a well-known schizo-autistic spectrum, uh, which goes from people who just have mildly odd personalities yeah. um, to people who are um, very seriously psychotic and deluded. So, you, you, yes, you're right. It's one of the ways in which you can really understand the, the normal function. Yeah, it's very easy to think, oh, well, they're, they're just, you know, sort of lunatics in the old mm. parlance, you know. Mm. Yeah. But, but, you know, we, are, yeah. we all inhabit yes. something yeah. along, along that pathway, I think. Yes, indeed.